Okay, I want to show you right now some of the different bullets that I've been able to make. Just using rimfire brass, lead cores, um, shot cores, and different types of multi-core bullets. A lot of these are prototypes that need to be tested. We're testing for accuracy and, and um, terminal ballistic performance. But let's go ahead and start with some of the, the real basic stuff and go into the more advanced stuff that I've been putting together. So here we go. And here I got three different types of 55 gram bullets. They're all basically the same, except for these are made with different brands of brass. And we're just doing this to keep them consistent um, as far as jacket thickness and, and whatnot. Now the bullets that you see here are just 55 gram hollow points. They've been polished and they look pretty nice. You know, once you clean them up, you know, they look like gold. They, re they really look nice. The only thing that we need to really do is test them. Now, these two here are made with uh, two different types of brass. One is Remington, the other one is Federal. This here was, it was filled to the top. And it was just bullets that I had grabbed and or brass that I had grabbed and just turned to bulk um, hollow points for blasting ammo, really, because I wanted to test them out in my one and seven inch twist. So I got a big bag of two twenty threes made with uh, the rimfire jackets. I tried the seventy five grain soft points; they did okay. Um, I really got to figure out uh, the right length of the bank surface to the length of the bullet to the rifling twist to get really good accuracy. You know, still working on getting the inside of the jackets really clean. That's the key, is a clean jacket. But uh, basically, all I'm paying for here is the powder and the primer. No more am I going to have to buy bullets for my 22 caliber center fires anymore, which is nice. And I can make them to whatever specifications I want, put whatever I want in them. So I'm going to get some nice close-ups here of different bullets that I've made and we're going to go through them one at a time. It's going to be a, kind of a long video, but I figured you guys have been waiting long enough for me to put this together, so I wanted to make sure that you guys can see what I've been doing. Now, here's a standard 55 grain. Has a, I put it through the um, tumbler and it's got some polished media stuck in the hollow point, which is no, really no big deal. Uh, what I'm doing from now on, instead of polishing them after I put the points on them, I'm polishing them when the, just after the cores are seated, so there's not a bunch of gunk inside the bullet. So, there's the standard 55 grain. What did I make this one out of? Oh, these are made out of the Remington. Uh, brass. If you look at the bottom of the brass, or the, the thing, the uh, jacket, you can see that you see Remington or Federal or whatever brand that I was using, which is kind of neat because if you want, you can take a bullet and design it around a certain brand of case. That way you always know what you have, whether it's a frangible, a um, multi-core, or a solid lead core, and you can dictate what that is just by the brand of case you're using. So it's really up to your imagination what you want to stuff in them. Okay, here, just for, we still got that same 55 gram bullet here. But over here, I have a 52 grain soft point made from a 22 short. You can see this, how the soft point comes up. It still has like a little dent in there because I don't have the soft or the lead tipping die, which is kind of an expensive little die. But um, they seem to do okay. You know, it's, uh, it's, a new, it's, it's a different little concept. I designed these for my 22 Hornet, where these are designed for more like my 223 and my 220 Swift. So here are some of the possibilities. Now moving right along, we still got the 52 grain soft point. We have the 55 grain hollow point. Now we got the 60 grain hollow point that I molly coated. These bullets weren't polished before molly coating them, and it doesn't really matter. Um, then over here is the 75 grain soft point. 
Now with the stingers, I can make up to an 80 grain bullet with that. Actually, I could probably make this 80 grains too, but you know, it's really kind of pushing it. But the um, if I wanted to make a 70 between a 70 and 72 grain hollow point, I can do that with the stinger case. I'm still having some issues with the case being nickel plated. So that's kind of a, a work in progress there. Let's keep going. All right, added to the pile here is a 70 grain soft point. The 70 grain soft point has a slightly smaller soft point to it and it should do all right. We'll, we'll see what happens when we put them down range. When I make small lots of these uh, prototypes, I only make them in about 20 to 30 round lots. That way I'm, I'm not stuck with a couple hundred bullets that just aren't going to shoot straight. So that's where we're at here. All right, what you're looking at here is the the 60 grain hollow point, the 55 grain hollow point as the jacket turns out just from the forming. But right here is another 55 grain bolt that's slightly shorter. I turned it, the jacket down to 0 .700 inches to make the, the bullet a little more length tolerant for what I'm doing so I don't have a, a giant... Um, empty cavity in here with uh, no lead supporting the jacket. And this also makes for a much more consistent overall length, which also makes for a much more consistent case overall length when you're seating them. Here's an interesting bullet here. This is my 57 grain multi-core bullet. This has an air gun pellet on the top, a steel BB right around here in the O-drive area, and a solid lead core. I have another version of this that has a frangible core. So when you take a rare earth magnet up to it, it sticks, which is kind of cool. This doesn't make this armor piercing at all because I don't think those uh, little BBs are going to penetrate a whole heck of a lot other than um, soft tissue and bone, which is what they're designed for. I designed these for shooting coyotes. And as you know, that some of the more uh, thin jacket bullets when they hit a larger animal like a coyote has a tendency to wound them instead of kill them and I wanted to make this so that if it does the jacket does separate completely before it gets into anything vital that the BB will go punching through it and hit something vital and hopefully break bones on the way out the other side neat bullet we're going to see how these these do the little sphere in there uh, according to what I've been thinking may also work nice as a uh, gyroscope since it's perfectly spherical. We'll see. We got to test these out. They're not polished as you see. And this model look that you see on here, that is from the annealing process. And what we can do is two things to polish this up. You can get this stuff at Walmart or Kmart or any of those stores called Tarnex. It comes in a black bottle. It's a, liquid, it's a clear liquid that you put silver uh, or brass or copper or anything like that and it gets all the tarnish off and it'll be like a chemical dip. Okay, over here we have, on, on, on the right side here, we have a 55 grain jacket of hollow point, but on the other side we have a trimmed case to bring it down to where we can make a 53 grain flat base bullet. I'm hoping that these do pretty well since the, the length of the bullet is a bit shorter which will make it to where it'll stabilize a little bit better in the slower twist rifle barrels at the 1 in 12 and 1 in 14s. So we'll see how these work. A lot of these haven't been tested yet. I've only been able to test one weight style so far. I've just been too busy. So I've been sending these out to four members at AmmoSmith.com to test out. And Richard Birdhunter, who's a uh, really good guy on there, he and uh, Dan, my partner in this project, I sent them a bunch of bullets to test and I'm getting some good results back from them because they've been out there testing them. In fact, uh, Richard was testing uh, these bullets here, the 55 grain uh, bullets and the 60 grain molly coated bullets. And he, he said they're doing okay, but the according to Richard, the frangible, the shop core ones were doing extremely accurate uh, work, plus the terminal performance of them are supposedly spectacular. We're going to find out here pretty soon. Right now we still have the 53 grain flat point and the 55 grain 
hollow point. Now over here, we have a 62 grain, yeah, 62 grain bullet. You notice that the, the hollow point on it's a little bit wider, and the reason is if I close this up any more, the lid will start poking out the end of here. These haven't been trimmed to make them uniform in length. Really what I'm testing out here is the, um, the limit of what I can do with weight as far as uh, a standard 22 long rifle goes. And right now about 62 grain is the limit. 63 grains, the lead starts creeping out the top. So the 55 grain bullet seems to do just okay. Uh, not enough lead in there in my opinion. So 57 grain seems to work really well to fill it up and still keep it hollow point style. And 62 grain is the maximum weight for a standard 22 long rifle case without making it a soft point. But the only caveat is you have to make the, the open tip just a little bit wider. Yeah, these things, I know, I know a lot of you out there are looking for the highest ballistic coefficient possible. But in reality, these things are still going to travel a long, long ways. And all you got to do is figure out what your BC is on these, and you should be just fine. I just want to make one more note on the 75 grain soft point. These things did really well in my 1 to 7 inch twist AR-15. Uh, the accuracy wasn't exactly where I wanted it, but I didn't have the right scope on the rifle, and it wasn't in the ideal shooting conditions. We're out camping in the desert and we're just plinking. But they held together. They're I was running in right around 2,900 feet a second, and they did okay. Um, I'll tell you what, though. These things, when you hit something, uh, we shot a couple one-gallon jugs of water, and these things explode when they hit. I don't even think any of this bullet went out the other side of the one-gallon jug of water. The thing went off like you hit it with a 44 Magnum Glazer. It was unbelievable. Good little bullet. It travels a nice long way. Accuracy needs to be... Uh, refined on this a little bit. I don't think it's because of the bullet. I think it's because of the load I was using. I was using Ball C2 powder from Hodgden and it wasn't a maximum load. It was right around uh, maybe a grain above uh, the starting load. So I'm going to switch powders to A322 and Varget and 4895 and see what it does. Now this bullet here is a 55 gram bullet. But this bullet here is made with number 8 lead shot compressed into a core. And what's really interesting when you, we're going to go into this later on and once we get really detailed into the series. What the interesting thing about these shot cores are is once you compress them, they look like they're a pretty solid core until you either squeeze it or drop it. And when you do that, the cores absolutely come apart. They disintegrate back into their individual parts. And the reason why they do that is lead oxidizes extremely fast once it hits the atmosphere. So the only thing holding this core together is the jacket. So when you hit something with it, it will disintegrate. This is good for home defense. It's great for uh, in areas where you don't want any ricochets. So if it hits something hard, it'll absolutely disintegrate into little tiny bits and not go anywhere. If you hit the target, whether it's a jackrabbit, um, an intruder in your house, this will deposit all the energy into the target. Also, uh, I counted out approximately how many different um, pellets are in here, and there's approximately 45 pellets inside of this. So when this hits you, you have 45 different pieces of lead zinging through you. Now, one of the other bullets that I've done is made a 30 grain frangible core with a steel BB and a lead pellet. We still got to determine what those do on impact. And we're also going to experiment too with the magnesium granules in the front. So when it hits a hard target, it'll make a bright white flash when it hits. Not so much an incendiary round, just a bullet that'll mark the target. So we're going to test those out next time we head out to the desert. We're going to show you how to make those too. There's other things you can use for cores. You can use um, uh, those airsoft BBs, and what you got to do with those is you got to put them through the core swage die. And what you do is you get a little pellet. I'm going to show you one of those pellets here in a second, and I want to show you what we're going to do with those. 